As Pauline Namphai went about her chores on March 26, 2006, she could not have known that what started like any other Sunday would end with horrific news that would alter the course of her life forever. She went to bed after lunch on that fateful day and fell asleep while Sean drove his toy cars over her arms. The little boy was nowhere to be found when she woke up two hours later. I wake up and I was looking for him but I didn't see him nowhere. So I thought he was over by my uncle who lives next, next door. He had a boat under his house and Sean liked to go and play in the boat because he's a fisherman. And I thought he was there. Pauline says she shared a very special bond with her son and was often accused of cosseting him. With that in mind, she did not resume the search for him until approximately 4 p.m. that afternoon. It was at this point that full-fledged panic set in. She made her way to the Coover police station where she filed a missing persons report. Believing that officers on call that night trivialized her concern, she went to the U.S. Embassy the following morning as Sean was a United States citizen. They are the people who got the ball rolling and finding Sean because minutes after Samantha John interviewed me, the police, police reached here by the van load, the chopper reached by the, in the night, the, the dogs reached, it was crazy down here. And it was the dogs that found him. They asked me for a piece of his clothing, and the dogs found the body. The search was suspended on Tuesday morning when Sean's battered remains were found in a cane field a stone's throw from his home. Shockwaves started to go through my body, and I couldn't, and I couldn't, I could, still couldn't accept it. I still wouldn't accept it. Even seeing the coroner's vehicle there, I still would not accept anything bad happen. Like, it's like everything just go, pssst. I shut down. I couldn't cry. I couldn't bawl, I couldn't talk, I couldn't think, I couldn't do nothing. Not, I, I, my mind refused to accept anything bad had happened to Sean. I, I can't explain, I can't explain that kind of shock. When asked if she considered moving from the area that holds so many painful memories, Pauline responds with a resounding no. Relocate and go where it would be even worse if I'm by myself. Right now I could still cope with it because I still have my family around me. If I go by myself to live by myself, I would be alone in with around strangers who don't know. Pauline says, if given the opportunity to speak to her son's killers, she has one question. I, I think I will only ask why. Why? The grieving mother says those responsible for her son's death must pay. Justice uh, for me, all I can think about is suffering, suffering. Let them suffer. For me, they have to suffer for what they do to my child. As she waits for justice, she lives one day at a time trying to come to terms with her loss. She says she often blames herself for Sean Luke's death believing that he may still be alive had she remained in the United States. Dion Batiste, C News.